Today I'm doing a project for my brother. He asked me to combine this with this. Any hockey fan should know what this is, but if you don't, it does this. And to encourage me to do this project, he even sent me some beer. This is a New England Pale Ale from Blind Man Brewing. Where are they from? Ah, they're from Alberta. Okay. That's a very long description. Feel free to pause it if you'd like to read what this thing is all about. Oh, I know it's definitely not my usual style, but hey, who am I to look a gift beer in the mouth? So in case you hadn't guessed, what he wants me to make happen is when you screw up in playing Operation and uh, hurt old Cavity Sam here, he wants the player to be greeted with uh, uh, the loudest possible siren and flashing lights. The loud part isn't part of my brief because this thing does have an audio out and he does have a, an amplified speaker that he can connect it to, so that's not a big deal. He simply wants it triggered. He said I can hack it up and run wires into it, do whatever I want. Uh, I would like to use the remote control, but even more slick, if I can pull it off, is the fact that this is an infrared remote. You see the infrared flashing when I push the button. So I'm hoping that I can just interpret that using an Arduino um, and then duplicate it using an Arduino and interface that with this guy. So I don't have to hack this up. I don't have to hack this up. I just have to make a couple of connections in there. That is my plan. So to test this thing, I've grabbed just a basic infrared receive module. It comes with a lot of Arduino starter kits. Grabbed a random nano and I've loaded it up with, uh, some example code from the infrared library. And what it's supposed to do is when I push the button and it generates its IR, this thing should translate it into signals coming into, where are we here? D2 on the Arduino. It should uh, flash the built-in LED in sync with that to indicate that it's receiving it. And it also should dump out to the serial monitor. So I push the button. Okay, so the light's flashing on there. So it is receiving something. So there's nothing being decoded onto the serial monitor. I'm going to try a few other example sketches that I can find in a few other IR libraries and see if I can get this to do anything. I know the hardware is working because, like I said, we can see it flashing on the LED there when I push the button. So that's working, and that's working, and this is working. I'll be back. Well, I've tried three different IR libraries, and I've tried all of the receive demo sketches that come with them, and all the decoder sketches, and not one of them can figure out what, uh, what format this thing is talking. So I think the next step is to pop this remote apart and see if there's anything in there that I can use. Um, either some chip that'll show me what's really going on or some place that I can tie into it so that the operation game can trigger the remote control, which means I will have to cut into this thing a little bit, but I'm told that I'm allowed to do that for this project. So here we go. What do you think we're going to find in here? Hope it's not too proprietary. It'd be nice if it was something, you know, generic and easily modifiable, but I don't know how many of these things they make. I don't know how specialized it really is. Oh, well, that's disappointing. We have a blob chip. We have capacitor, resistor, 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 transistor, LED, and push button. It's not even much of a push button. It's just a little conductive pad and the tracks on there that creates a contact. Okay, so it looks like that little test point there is one side and the other side looks like the other side traces out to the positive voltage. Okay, 
So I guess all I need to do is connect that positive voltage to that pad right there and we can get a signal. Or I don't even need that positive voltage. I only need any three volts as long as I'm referenced to the ground. Which I think I can get from the operation game. Because if I'm not mistaken, this runs on three volts as well. Yes, it does. Okay, so how do we get into that module? Looks like it came in from the other side and it's just held by there's a clip there and a clip there. So how do I push that out the other side? Ah, okay. So this is held in with little plastic welded rivets, right? I have to get a little bit violent on it. I guess I can just double side tape that down when I'm done. Hopefully I don't tear the cardboard too badly. There's another spudger here. Well, I tore the cardboard a little bit around the rivets and I broke the plastic on the rivets a little bit. But we can get to our little module now and pop him out. Uh, I just need to get those uh, to get that clip out of the way and get this clip out of the way and that pops out the other side. Cool. So here's the game module. We got uh, two AA batteries there, so three volts total. We have the probe and this just makes contact with the metal backer on the game. So when you do this, oh, in the old game that we had when we were kids, that was an incandescent light, but I think this is an LED. Yeah, it looks like an LED, doesn't it? I wonder if the buzzer in there is a real buzzer or if it is still just like a vibrator motor like they used back in the old one from, God, when was this from originally? The 70s? I don't know. Uh, did you play with this uh, game when you were kids? I'm thinking that's how old it is, though. That is just a little transparent dome, well, translucent dome, over a standard 5mm LED. Okay. Oh, yeah. And there you can see the offset weight on the motor vibrating along, just like, uh, just like that thing that she told you not to worry about. The other thing that I noticed that I haven't seen before, there's a little micro switch in here. You can push down. Huh? Oh. So when you push on this nose, it buzzes and vibrates. That's also a feature that the original one didn't have. So down in here we have the LED, we have the switch, uh, two contacts onto the motor, probably just a little brushed DC motor, a couple of capacitors to try and suppress any noise coming from the motor, any electrical noise. Then we have what initially appears like a resistor, but I'm fairly confident that is in fact an inductor again to try and keep the uh, the noise to a minimum coming out of that motor just to make it play nicer things around it so I'm thinking that if I pick up on the battery side of that inductor and on the motor there I should be able to get about three volts 2.7 and it goes the other way. So the positive voltage is over there and the negative voltage, the switch negative, I guess, is there. There we go, 2.7 volts. So I think if I take this to the ground of this circuit, or the negative, the common, whatever you want to call it, and I take this, almost three volts, to that switch input, yeah, I should be able to do this with just two wires. Is it going to be noisy? Probably. Will it work? I don't know. This may not be the best idea, but we'll see if it works. All right, let's see what happens. Battery's back in. So if I do this... <laughs> there we go. Well, that was relatively easy. 
So now I guess all I have to do is make that slightly less janky and a bit more permanent. Um, although I would like it to be reversible because I don't want this to be permanently attached because my brother does use this during hockey season when he's got buds over for, to watch the game. So I think I'll have to come up with some sort of a little plug to put in there. So this is not permanently attached. That shouldn't be too difficult to do, I don't think. After a bit of digging around in my stockpile, I think I'm going to use these tiny little two-pin JSTs. They're keyed so that they don't get connected wrong, and they're nice and tiny so they're not going to get in the way. So I've poked a couple of holes in the plastic casing, and I'm just going to solder these down, and we'll reconnect it and try it again once it's reassembled. All right, let's plug these guys together and see what happens. <laughs> That's worth a drink. Okay, I'm just going to figure out how to glue that in place so that it doesn't uh, put too much strain on the connector. I'll probably use a combination of super glue and hot melt, I'm thinking. And uh, yeah, then we'll just button it up and we'll be done. There, the glue is all set and the wires are tucked in. I've cut a wee notch in this outer rubber ring here for the connector to fit through. It's just a matter of reassembling it now and seeing if it still works. That's always the challenge when you're uh, and you're messing with something that you don't fully understand is to see if it still works after you're done modifying it. So far, so good. Well, this is kind of a janky mechanism, but I mean, it is designed just as a toy. You can see there how that brushes up against there to lock in. Uh, now that wire's got to go down there, and there's the two clicks. And there's that. Now then, I think I'm just going to use a spudger to uh, tuck the cardboard around what's left of those little plastic rivets. I might try and slip a bit of double-sided tape underneath here if that doesn't hold, but I'm hoping that this is good enough, especially for my brother to use as a drinking game with his buddies. Which, of course, if I didn't explain at the beginning, is what this is really all about. So now, as long as the uh, infrared is kind of shining out the side a little bit, it doesn't even have to be visible. People don't even have to be able to see it. And that's over there, so there's a bit of a line. And this thing is fairly forgiving as to where the infrared comes from. But if we do this... Okay. So I guess you do have to make sure that the infrared is a little bit visible and... I can't tell inside this thing where the infrared receiver is. And I tried to take it apart earlier. The screws underneath there, but then the next layer of screws underneath are stripped. Um, they're just a cheap uh, metal screw and the heads are stripped out. So I couldn't get any further into it. And I figured that'd be frustrating. So I didn't bother to show you guys, but there we go. It does the job. So I, I guess thanks to my brother for giving me an interesting project to mess with. Um, I hope this uh, gets him and his friends lots of amusement as they're playing with it. And uh, yeah, um, thanks to everybody for watching. I guess that's it for now. I will talk to you later.